Hey Sotopians, it's Jess here with a Peekaboo Pattern Shop Aspen Pullover Review. You guys may remember the video that I did last week of the Orinoco Designs fabric reveal where Nadia had sent me some fabric that she wanted me to sew into an Aspen Pullover. And I said, of course, I actually have a friend who's due to have a baby any day and I know that she would love to have one of these to nurse her little baby in. So I'm gonna do things a little bit differently from the original pattern today, but don't worry, this is gonna make things a lot easier for you. So I'll explain. In the original pattern, what you would do is you would cut out this optional nursing front panel and you would cut out two of them, as opposed to the non-nursing version where you would cut out one of these on the fold. So basically what you would do with a nursing run is that you would cut out two of these, you would finish the edge by overlocking them, then you would put them right sides together and you would sew a straight stitch from there to there. You would stop leave a gap here in this section here and then you would close this hole from here down to here and that would create your nursing access. Now the problem that I found with this and I think other people have found the same problem too is it creates way too much bulk here and you can actually sort of see the seam line in there because there's top stitching and all sorts of things going on in there. In the Aspen that I wore in my Orinoco review I actually had to put a zip inside after I had made it because the fabric is so thick that it was split right open and you can see it underneath this panel here. Now in this design you eliminate the optional nursing panel. So we get rid of that and we save a few trees and we would cut out our regular front and what you can actually do is after you've made the jumper and you've tried it on you can actually find where you want that split to be and you can just roll cut that edge and it will not ever fray because you're sewing with knit fabrics. Isn't that awesome? Or you could cut it out while you have it flat on your cutting table before you attach any of your pieces and you can come back later and cut a little bit extra off if you needed to. Now what I found I had to do was that I had to actually cut mine a little bit higher and a little bit deeper just to be able to get that proper nursing access. So that's just something to consider. Now I do need to make mention of something that you may notice and that is that I have thumb hole cuffs on this Aspen here and the other two that I made. This does not come standard with this pattern but there is a hack that you can probably find on YouTube for free and I'm going to see if I can find that to link below in the description to be able to do this on your jumper. It's actually quite easy. And this hood that I have here is from another pattern that I had laying around but I do highly recommend that you buy the hood that comes from Peekaboo Pattern Shop that can be applied to any of their adult jumpers. However, the Aspen comes with a cowl neck option which will actually end up looking a lot like this. So this is like a crossover hood or a cowl style hood and I really like that. And I can confirm that it does keep that cold wind out which is really awesome. Now on to the fun part, the fabric that Nadia sent me which you can probably see behind me. And these are actually available to purchase from Orinoco Designs and I will link that in the description below. So Nadia asked me if I wanted to add another Aspen to my collection and I said, well, I would love to, but then I had a thought. A friend of mine was due to have her baby any day and she's actually just given birth to her baby in the last few days. So I thought, I don't really need any more of these for myself. So I actually wanted to sew these up for my friend Catherine. And Nadia has sent me some very specific instructions as to where she wanted these fabrics to feature on the pattern. So if you want to find out, follow along. Also, don't forget to pre-wash and iron your fabrics before you start. It's very, very important. Pre-washing will ensure any shrinkage happens in the washing machine before you sew it, as opposed to afterwards when you wear it. We don't want that happening. Alrighty, let's get started. So what Nadia has asked me to do is to use the floral for the front panel here and for the accents. So the cuffs and the waistband. And I'll also use the floral on one side of the cow neck and I'll use the knit on the other. So if you remember this one from my last video, it looks like it's been knitted with wool, but it's actually been printed on to cotton micro. So now what I'm gonna actually do is have a think about what color I want to have on my piping here. So I'm just gonna select something from one of my solids behind me. Have a bit of a think about that. I might have a little bit of a match up and see what I've got here. Definitely more of a fan of the neutral and I'm thinking maybe this off-white that I've got here. So I'll put that one down and pop that against guys. And I have a little bit of this burgundy colour that I have on this one and that one is from Wicked Fabrics. So I'm going to pull that one out 
because I think this one's a contender. So let's have a look. I'm going to pop these together side by side and I'm going to have a look at the burgundy. That's really pretty. Now I'm going to have a look at the off-white that I've got here. And I really can't decide which one I'm going to do. I'm going to go with the burgundy. So I'll pop this aside and I'll do the cuffs afterwards. Now there's not a cuff pattern piece, but there are measurements. And it's basically just a rectangle. And I'll try and cut out all of my floral pieces now so that I can put this away when I'm done. So I'm going to go, I'm going to cut it across the grain. So you have a look for the grain lines that are in there. And I'll use my really daggy weights that my husband gave me. This will actually need to be folded over. So we are going to do our pocket, our front pocket, and that will be done on the fold. So I'm just going to have a look and see. So I don't really want the floral to be bang in the middle. I want it to be a little bit off center. So I'm just gonna have a look at that. Mm. That looks about right to me. About there. Alrighty, pattern weights, look right on the edge there, and I've got to pull this down because I'm running out of cutting out there, and I'm actually going to use my viscous rotary cutter to cut this out, I hate cutting with scissors. So a lot of you might do it the old school way, which is where we pin the pattern down and then we trace it around with a pen and then we cut it out with our scissors. But I guess the more modern, more effective way of doing it, and this is specifically with cutting with knits, is that we actually put our pattern piece down and we use weights to keep it down in place. And we cut it on a quilter's cutting mat using a quilter's rotary cutter. It's a little bit of an investment and it's definitely not an absolute must, but I highly recommend it if you're going to be doing a lot of sewing. And these cutting mats you can pick up on sale pretty cheaply from Spotlight. The Fiskars Rotary Cutter doesn't come with a sharpest blade, so I actually buy my blades from Heffen Sewing Haven, and I'll link that in the description below. They're really, really sharp, so just be really careful. So basically, I just pop the pressure down and I cut. Now this blade isn't heat sharp, so I may have to go back and forth a couple of times. You see how quick and easy this is to cut out and I'm not having to mark out anything with pens and pins and things like that. And that's that piece done. And that's it. And we have our front piece. So I don't think we have any awkwardly placed roses, if you know what I'm talking about. So I'll pop this one aside. And if you just want to keep this piece on hand, because this piece actually has the measurements that you need for your waistband and your cups. Just sneak it under there. All right, next I'm going to cut out the cow piece. Just a tip guys, when you are constructing your pieces, a lot of people use sticky tape and I did it for a long time until I discovered glue sticks are so much easier. They'll last a lot longer and if you make mistakes, you've got a few seconds to pull it off and to get it back into place. So definitely my number one tip for constructing PDF paper patterns is using a glue stick. And I actually buy the Boss Stick glue stick two pack from Kmart for $5 and providing that my kids don't find them, they last a long time. Okay, so moving on to the body. Now remember we're cutting the basic option and we're cutting a front and a back. So you're cutting that piece on the fold twice. So just while I have it here on the table, I'm gonna make this one my front piece. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of a crease in that with my hand so that I can see that center fold when I open that up. So I'm gonna cut slit in but I'm not going to go too deep because I'll have a look at that later and I will cut that a little bit deeper afterwards. So just a nice clean line, 
this will become the nursing access. or anything. It's going to be really good. Pop that one aside too. And I'll cut out my back piece now on the fold. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back and there's a dotted line here. I'm going to actually cut that back and fold that back because that is supposed to be cut away from the front piece. Now a little tip that I can give you is not to cut it away completely, but just to leave a little bit there so you can actually fold this back along the rest of the line. I'll just give it a little fold at the back so I hide it. So it's tucked away. So next time when I go to make one of these, I actually just pull that back out and I cut around that. And you can secure it in place with a little bit of tape if you need to when you go to use it again. Easy as that. So now I'm done with this piece, so I'm going to put this one away as well. And I'll pop this aside for the other bits. Time to change my blade. Are actually quite affordable from Keffen Sewing Haven and I pay I think about 20 to 40 cents per blade depending on which size blade that you need. I do have a smaller birch one here which I do quite like and these are really really cheap you can buy them from a few bucks from Spotlight and then you can get the blades from Keffen Sewing Haven online really really cheap as well. Alrighty back to work. Like butter. Leave one. Left side. Now I just need to find enough fabric to cut out the last sleeve. So it's starting to get a little bit tricky here. Pop that piece away. So now we need to decide what is the contrasting colour we're going to do on the cowl neck, the cuffs and the waistband. So I have a couple of options using these two fabrics. So we have a few options. So let's lay out our pattern pieces. So we have our sleeves, we have our front then the pocket that goes against that, that's our back, we'll pop that aside. And this will be our pocket piece that goes over the top. And what we have to now consider, the piping that goes down the sides here. In fact, I feel inclined to mirror what I've done on this pull over here and do the burgundy piping here, burgundy wrist cuffs here, and the burgundy waistband here. So I'm gonna cut those out and I'm gonna see how that looks but I'm going to cut the cow in the knit to contrast with the floral. Smooth that out. And we'll lay that down as close to the edge as possible. Daggy pattern legs. Super sharp rotary blade. anymore. And I'll pop 
this fabric away because I don't need any more of this one. Now with the scrap pieces that you have left, you could make like a baby size or a small toddler size version of the Aspen pullover. Well, they're really, really handy to make fluff pads, nursing pads, underwear, things like that. So definitely hold on to those scraps because they will be useful. What I recommend to do is to get a tub and I keep a tub under my sewing table with all of my favorite scraps in there. And when I'm going to go sew something that requires small amounts of fabric, I always go and look in there first. That way I'm not accumulating lots and lots of useless scraps, which is really annoying. Okay, now on to the bands. So remember how I said that you would have to reference the pattern piece for the measurements? This is the step where we do that. So you'll find on here where it says bottom band, sleeve cuff, neck band optional because you can make this without any kind of foot on it, and knit trim, which is the piping along here. Now that is optional. If you weren't going to do it, you would have to fold it over and you would have to top stitch that. But having the piping, I feel, just really sets it off. So I've actually marked out the measurements. So I'm going to look at this, I'm gonna reference this and I'm gonna cut out my piece according to the chart. One of my tips is to buy a quilting ruler because it has the inches marked out on it clearly so you can cut out bands and things like that with such ease. You can get these in really, really long sizes as well. But this one I find fits on my table nice and comfortably and I can work along my bands with this. Another reason why I recommend to get a quilter's ruler is because most PDF patterns that you buy online these days work with inches, which I actually prefer and I've gotten quite used to. Especially if you're going to be working with an overlocker. The chart says to cut it out one inch wide but I actually cut it out a little bit wider than that because my overlocker likes to eat it and it gets caught under there so I like to give myself a little bit of extra room to play with. You could cut it 1.52 inches wide whatever you felt like you needed in extra room. So all of my pattern pieces are ready to go. Okay, so I've got all of my pattern pieces cut out and ready to go. I've made myself a cuppa and my favourite Zootopia mug and I'm ready to start sewing these pieces together. So one of my tips to sewing the PDF patterns is actually just to print off your cover sheet and pop that inside a folder with your pattern pieces and not to print off your instructions but actually use them from something like a laptop or your phone or an iPad or something like that. So I just use my laptop and I keep that in arm's reach so that whenever I need to glance over at the instructions I have it sitting there ready for me to use. Alrighty, so the first step is really easy. Move my coffee out of the way. So basically you want to get your two piping pieces that you cut out last and you'll get your front pocket piece. I just need to find where that is. Sort out my pieces here. Okay, that is this piece here. And then you want to overlock or zigzag stitch those together. And you want to do that with right sides together. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to duck over to the ironing board and I'm just going to iron that in half so that that doesn't wobble around when I'm sewing it. So when you're sewing down your trim, you just want to give it a slight little bit of stretch and we'll use a quarter inch seam allowance. Now you may notice that I'm not using wonder clips or pins here because this is actually really, really easy to do freehand. All right, so I've just done the one side and what you'll do is when you've done the other side, is that you'll take this over to the iron and you will press this flat and then you're going to top stitch this down using your preferred method, whether that's a double needle or if it's a zigzag or a straight stitch, but you're preferably going to want something that is recommended for stretch fabrics.
Alrighty, now to iron and top stitch. So I'll be using a twin needle today. I'm not going to go into that too much in this video, but I'll be leaving a video up for you guys to show you how I actually do that. Alright, so that's got a nice amount of stretch in it because I've used a twin needle which has left a zigzag on the underneath side with the bobbin. But because it's a little bit wavy, which is fine, I'm just going to give that a little bit of a press and that will come up really nice and flat. So you may have noticed if you're following along with the pattern, I've actually top stitched this a few steps earlier than what it says to inside the pattern. And this is for a reason. I found it to be just a little bit too unpredictable because the pattern calls for you to top stitch from that point down to that point and then when you stitch it on you'll top stitch from that point to that point and that point to that point but I felt that sewing across the whole thing in one go and then sewing it down and just top stitching there and leaving this middle bit open and top stitching that down there was a lot more reliable and that definitely has worked for me so I'm going to do it for this one as well so we can skip right down to step seven now because we've done that and step seven is actually sewing the front pocket piece down to your front panel piece and because we haven't cut out that nursing option we've just cut out that front bit and we've cut a slit in it it's really easy just to lay it on top and top stitch it down so I'm just going to work out and mark down where I want the nursing access to actually come to and I'll be right back so I've pinned down here because under here will be the pocket and there'll just be a little bit of a top stitching there and then all the way up here is going to be open and from there, all the way up to the top shoulder, is going to be closed. So this bit here is going to be our nursing access. So this is the bit where I'm just going to eyeball the line that I top stitched before, and I'm just going to go over that again. And I'll cut away those threads later. Say hi YouTube. <laughs> Say I'm a brat YouTube. I'm a brat YouTube. <laughs> Shut the door. Kids. Alrighty, so I'm just going to go ahead and snip off all of my threads and then I'm going to move on to the next step, which is sewing the sleeves onto the front panel. So I mentioned earlier how some people might find it problematic that the sleeve pattern piece is actually meant to be cut on the fold. I do find that there is a slight fit issue through here. As you can see, there's a little bit of puckering. So I am going to make sure that with this one, with my overlocker, I'm just going to cut a little bit more away of the seam allowance there to counteract that problem. The upside to it is that you just need to lay it right sides together and you don't need to worry about which piece is the front and which piece is the back. And again, I'm going to do this freehand. Now, some people at this point, they like to put a little bit of piping in there. So just make sure that if you're putting piping in around your sleeves, that you do that at this step. I'm not going to be doing that with this one. Okay, so we have the fronts of our sleeves on. So I'm now going to get the back piece and I'll do the same with the back piece. Okay, so that's the main body of the jumper constructed. And just looking at it now, I'm gonna take a little bit more off of these sleeves because they're still just a little bit too baggy for what I want. Ok, 
Okay, so that's the main part of the body constructed. I've gone through and I've taken these sleeves in as narrow as I can, and I'm really happy with how they're looking. Let's flip it inside out and have a look. Let's see how these fabrics look together. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's gorgeous. So what I could do at this point, and the pattern allows for this, is to actually just do a regular knit neckband, which would look really, really nice. Um, if I wanted to, I could match the piping that I've done here on the front pocket, and I could do a knit neckband to match that, and that would look really, really good. With the same matching cuffs and waistband, that would look lovely. But for this one, I'm just gonna continue on and do the cow neck like I planned. So the next step is to construct the cow neck. Turn it out and press it and then we top stitch it. So you top stitch it when you've decided which one is going to be on the outside and which one is going to be on the inside. And I think for this one, I'm going to do it so that the knit is on the outside and the floral is on the inside so that it looks something like this. But I'm just going to go over to the jumper and have a look first to see which way I like it. All right, so I'm glad that I checked because I've actually decided that I'm going to do it this way around it just looks so much better um, I just wanted to clarify for those of you who are wondering I'm not saying cow neck I'm South Aussie so it sounds like I'm saying that but I am in fact calling this a cow neck I just can't say it properly born and raised South Aussie sorry so I'm going to top stitch this now let's top stitch it moment when you run out of bobbin and you realize that you've been sewing nothing it just happened to me give me a sec just FYI this is the correct way to fill a bobbin with woolly nylon nice and soft and loose. You don't want it too tight. Alrighty, back to top stitching. If this was for me, I wouldn't bother unpicking this, but the tension was off a little bit as the bobbin had run out. So I'm gonna unpick this and start again. I only got two inches in anyway. I'll go give this a little press just to get all those wobbly bits out and then we'll attach it onto the main jumper. Okay, so now I am going to use my wonder clips and I'm going to attach the cow neck. So I'll find the center back by folding it in half, which is there. And I'll pop a wonder clip on there and then I'll find the center back of my jumper, which is about there. And I'll attach it right sides together and then you're just gonna work your way around. And what you wanna do is when you come to the front, there will be notches on either side and they'll have to line up. Just be very sure to catch all of your pieces of fabric in here around the front because there are one, two, three, four, five, six layers of fabric right there at the front. And you may have a little bit of trouble with your overlocker going through that. So it's definitely an idea if you're feeling a little bit unsure, you can go through with a straight stitch on your sewing machine just to make sure that's basted in there. Just a tip, when you're sewing on a neckband or a hood, don't start in your center back because when you hang that up, you will be able to see the stitching where you started and finished and that bit's always very messy. So I recommend starting over on the shoulder where nobody's going to see that. You start here, go all the way around, and then you finish there. And just give your fabric a little bit of a stretch when you're putting on the hood so that it has a little bit of give when you put it over your head. You don't want any popping threads. Ok, 
Okay, now for the part that makes me nervous. Did I catch all of those layers? Yes, I did. So there we go, we have our cowl neck there. Cowl neck, it's very hard to say. So the last step is to do our cuffs and our waistband and we're finished. Now I know I don't have matching threads and even if I did, I don't know if at this point I could be bothered changing my threads, but I'm just gonna go and use my white thread. But first of all, I'm gonna give this a little press because the ends are curling a little bit. So the first step is to fold it over on the widest part on itself and we wanna overlock that and then we're gonna turn it inside out. Just remember that if you have taken a little bit of width off of your sleeves, just take a little bit of width off of your cuffs as well because you want your cuffs to be smaller than your sleeves because it's supposed to stretch. And we do the same with the waistband. We fold it over on itself, long ways. And then we turn it out the other way. That will be attached to the bottom of our jumper. So I'll do the waistband first. Put this aside. We don't need our sewing machine anymore from this point. So find the center back, and that's where you're going to want to start. Don't make the mistake that so many people do of putting the seam line at the front because as soon as you realize you have, you are going to be so angry with yourself. So remember, put this in the back. And right sides together. Now, if you're new to doing waistbands, I recommend you clip or pin the whole thing, but I'm just gonna do mine freehand again. Hey, that's the waistband done. Now, the wrist cuffs are really, really easy. Actually, I'm gonna get mine out of the way for this because it's a little bit fiddly, but easy. So we turn them halfway inside out. I, to get them even, because I know this is really fiddly, I actually just put it on my hand myself. And I do this for kids' cuffs as well, because kids' cuffs are really tight. So I pop it on my hand and just get it all smooth. Then you're going to pop that on your sleeve with the seam of the cuff running alongside the seam of the sleeve. And so we're going to slip that over the sleeve. I'm going to line those edges up, give it a bit of a shake, straighten it all up. And a lot of people will pin or clip this, and you definitely can. But again, I'm gonna do it freehand. And this is the very, very last piece of the entire jumper and it is done. It's pretty exciting. I've managed to get this done in one night with my kids around bedtime and my husband wasn't even home. So if that's any indication of how easy this is to do, I don't know what is. And we 
we are done. All right, let's have a look. Now that is a gift I'm very, very proud to be giving. Well, I may not get to keep it, but I definitely get to try it on first. Okay, so I've just tried it on and I've noticed something a bit weird about its neck. So I'm wondering if maybe I haven't pulled it in tight enough when I've done it. I think what I probably was supposed to do was to stretch those two front pieces over so that the little notches that are in there are actually supposed to meet. So I'm gonna unpick this now and I'm gonna give it another go. Okay, problem solved. I took it off and I fixed it and I like this a lot better. So make sure when you are doing the cow neck option that you actually cross those front bits over so that the triangles are actually touching each other. So that's my tip for the neck. Well, that's all from me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I've inspired you to sew your very own Aspen pullover. You can buy your very own copy of the pattern of the Aspen pullover by clicking the link below. And you can also source the fabric that I've used today and fabrics like it from Orinoco Designs. And I'll also leave that in the description below. If you liked the video that you saw today and you want to see others like this, don't forget to give this a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching guys. Until next time, stay warm and see you later.